Well, when the books are written about this era and the inquiries completed, the failure to protect sufficiently thousands of frontline NHS and care workers with enough PPE will be writ large. The public has mobilised in something akin to a war effort to try to make up the shortfall, commandeering 3D printers for masks and sewing scrubs at home. But Newsnight has discovered that on the front line, where people were daily putting themselves in harm's way and still are, many of those who were trying to blow the whistle were pressured to keep quiet. This exclusive report from James Clayton. It wasn't a government that sounded the alarm on COVID-19, it was a person. The Chinese doctor and whistleblower Li Wenliang was castigated by Chinese authorities for making false comments. He later died from the illness. The story of Dr. Li highlights just how important it is for healthcare workers who see a problem to feel comfortable highlighting it. That's not just the case in China, but everywhere. If you look at all the crises that we've had, a lot of the cover-ups that we've had is because just often just one or two people weren't listened to properly. Having covered COVID-19 now for a few months, you begin to notice patterns and themes. Now, there are some doctors and healthcare professionals that are very happy to talk to the media about their concerns, but many, many others are much more reticent about doing so, particularly when it comes to their own personal safety and PPE. Perhaps that's not surprising when you hear stories from doctors who have spoken out. This doctor agreed to speak to us on condition of anonymity. After concerns about PPE, he tried to raise it with hospital management, but says he was ignored. It seemed to be a case of, this is the situation, you're stuck with it. Get on with your job, like it or lump it. I was posting some concerns about national shortages of PPE online. Um, and my managers brought me up uh, the next day with no notice. They hauled me up in front of a panel of senior managers. It was very, very intimidating. And they, they gave me a bollocking, really, for quite a long time. And they kept on feeding me what felt like government type of lines, um, saying this hospital has never had PP shortages, which I know to be factually untrue and um, that essentially I should stop causing a fuss. If doctors are pressured into silence then where does that lead the rest of society? For members group the Doctors Association asked their network of healthcare workers what they'd experienced in a questionnaire that they've given to Newsnight. Out of 145 responses some had positive things to say. I raised with line manager it was escalated quickly and PPE was rapidly resourced. But there were many other comments which expressed concerns about flagging up issues. I saw the response to a junior colleague on social media who had raised concerns and was accused of scaremongering. Therefore, I stayed quiet. I put out a post asking if anyone could help us source FFP3 masks. Communications team contacted my senior who then ordered me to take it down. Not being listened to, being told of PHE guidance, told I'm scaremongering, disruptive and causing anxiety, not being a team player. During our research, we repeatedly came across the same problem. Healthcare workers, frustrated when nothing happened when they raised an issue internally, admonished when they raised it publicly. These are people who had tried the right channels. They hadn't just gone and tried to uh, put things on social media because you know, they were trying to be negative. These were people genuinely raising concerns who went to the people who should have listened to them and felt that they either couldn't raise a concern or weren't listened to. And so they had to find another outlet because people are, you know, they're putting their lives on the line. The charity Whistleblowers UK say that people have come to them who are fearful of losing their jobs. Those who have been speaking out have then received um, a reprimand or they've had a warning, especially the locum consultants, that their contracts are likely not to be, re um, uh, to be, to be uh, replaced again at the end of their term and that they're going to find themselves unemployed and likely not to be able to find a job. We're losing the most important members of staff, those who speak up. Throughout this pandemic, those who raise worries in the media have also been victims of smears by some, that these are just left-wing activists with an axe to grind. While this is the Conservative MP for Cheadle, head of the parliamentary group on whistleblowing. 
we have reports of people who feel that they cannot raise these issues um, without it being a problem for them in the workplace. And now that that is something that obviously we need to um, address. If a doctor has raised their concerns internally and they feel they're not being lis listened to, do you think they do have a right to post things on social media, to even go to the media itself? If a, um, an issue is raised um, on social media or in another way, then that really is a signal to say, let's speak to this person and make sure we take on board all of the issues that they've raised and address them. The chilling effect of this be quiet culture is ultimately reduced safety for both patients and hospital staff. There have been colleagues who've died at my hospital, who've worked at my hospital, um, and there have been a handful more who've been in ICU. It's very, very concerning that we can't even say, our colleagues have died, please don't let us be next. That report by James Clayton. Well, a Department of Health spokesman responded to our report by saying whistleblowers perform a vital and courageous service ensuring safe care and no one should ever be prevented from speaking up or discriminated against if they do.